Okay, now I'm going to actually show you the installation procedures for the motherboard. It will consist of quite a few things. It's going to be a lengthy part of the video. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install that I.O. shield that goes in the back of your computer. And I'm going to show you uh, how to mount the motherboard and the importance of being careful when you're mounting it. I am also going to show you how to run all of the uh, switches and LEDs and speaker wire, internal speaker wire, etc. for the motherboard. Um, so quite a bit going on here in this video. Um, enjoy! Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm going to take a sip of my pop. Okay, now let's get started. I'm going to show you a lot of procedures here at the motherboard. Yes, that didn't look right, I'm sure. Um, what I'm showing you here, these little gold pieces here, that have little screw-ins on the end of them, those little brass gold things are called spacers. They are very, very, very important when mounting your motherboard. Basically what they do is they give your motherboard a little bit of a gap between that, that steel or metal there on your case. And so it doesn't short out. That's so very important that you have these in there. Otherwise you're going to short out your motherboard. You could damage it, could ruin it, could go up all and puff the magic smoke. Who knows? So what you want to do is kind of eyeball it and occasionally take your motherboard, line it up, make sure it's matching up with those spacers with the holes there. The holes that are pre-made in that panel there should all line up one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> so as you see now, I am holding it up there to make sure it lines up correctly so far. And I'll continue putting more spacers in. There's, oh, normally at least six of them. Sometimes there's nine of them. It depends on the motherboard. And every motherboard has a slightly different layout for where those uh, screw holes are. So uh, as you can see, I'm holding the motherboard up so that I can help myself I'll line where those spacers go. You can also probably do this part at the very beginning before you even put your processor or anything on the motherboard. It might be a little easier to hold it up then. Uh, it's purely up to you. And actually in most cases, I'm only doing this for the purpose of the video so you can see it, but in most cases you probably actually put the computer on its side when you do this. It makes it a lot easier. But those little brass spacers, you just screw them in with your hand. You don't have to make them real tight. Just screw them in with your hand. Make them tight enough with your hand. Now, uh, our issue we've got here is this case has some different screw holes on some of it. And we're going to need a different kind of spacer that comes with this case to do this. I'll show you that here in a minute, as well as some other kind of spacer things you may see or use at times or may have to. So I'm going to pull that out here. When you're building a computer or working on a computer, it's a very wise idea to have extra stuff, have extra spacers with you on hand and screws with you, etc. You never know what you might need. Yes, that was disturbing that I was just doing there. Okay, so I'm pulling out some examples for you. Hopefully I will stop doing that soon so we can move on with this video. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, so what you see there 
is a, more of a standoff. They call sometimes these rubber ones they're plastic, I think they are. They call standoffs and they don't really actually screw in per se. Some of them do, some of them don't. You just put it you just push it in through the hole of the motherboard where the screw would normally go in and it keeps it separated from the metal. That silver thing I'm holding there is that special kind of spacer that we use on this case for some of them. They kind of actually clip on instead of screw in on some of those holes on the case. Why they designed it that way and didn't just use regular spacers throughout the whole thing, I'm not positive, but that's what they did here. So I am putting in those clip on spacers. Uh, you'll see here in a minute that I'm going to put one in the wrong place and I've got to remove it. This is what I mean. This part is important that you get every single spacer in the right place. You misplace one spacer where it's not supposed to be, it could touch that motherboard and it could uh, short it out, possibly. So again, I'm going to go to try to line it up, and I'm going to find out that it's not going to work the way it is. So that's just the thing you want to make sure that it lines up all across the board. Now I am struggling to get that spacer out. I will get it out eventually. It just was a little bit of a pain. Okay. I decided I'll just leave this part of the video in with me making adjustments so you can see that uh, it's not going to be a perfect walk in the park most of the time. Now I'm going to show you how to put the I.O. shield in. Uh, some of them screw in, but most of them that will be just like this, where all you have to do is push it in and it kind of snaps in place in the back. Sometimes they fit nice, sometimes they don't fit in nice. It just depends. This one actually happens to fit in pretty nice, and it's not loose, doesn't fall out, it's not too tight of a fit. So I'm going to turn the case around so you can see it better. I'm going to take the I.O. shield. You put it in from the inside f first, generally, unless it happens to be an external screw on one. You just push it in and make sure that it's in place all across the edges and it's that simple you'll notice on these there'll be some metal tabs on the inside of it sometimes you will have to bend these metal, these metal tabs a little bit because they'll be in the way of your ports etc so just look out for that before you put the motherboard in just bend some of the tabs out so they're out of the way of your ports little bit. Don't cut the tabs off, but you want to push them back in once you're done. But just make them so they're not in the way of your ports. This part can be a pain in the rear sometimes. Getting that motherboard to line up just right. Sometimes you have to put just a little bit of force on that motherboard on the side of it to push it in enough where you can get to a point where you can start screwing it in. Where those gold spacers are, you notice there are holes on them. Well, that's where you actually—that's where you actually screw it in at. 
with an actual screw and that's how you attach the motherboard to the spacers which then is attached to the case. It'll make a lot more sense when you actually go to do this yourself. Now I'm looking around for something. Screws is what I'm looking for. Alrighty, so we're going to screw this puppy in. Which would be also called mounting it to the case. On some motherboards, if, you're, if your wiring's long enough in your case, sometimes you can run your wiring to the motherboard before you mount it, but generally I run the wiring after the motherboard's in the case and mount it. Okay, I'm now going to mount in the motherboard, turning the case so you can see it, at least somewhat. Normally it's a lot easier that you actually put the case on its side and then you can just rest the motherboard in there and not have to hold it up. But again, for the purpose of my video, I've got the case up. So you wanna, the first screw is always the hardest to get in with mounting these motherboards. After that, you're okay. So just get it in there. Get it, try to get it lined up right so you can screw in that first screw and then from there you can shift the rest of the motherboard around. And what I like to do when I mount a motherboard or actually anything with screws is I like to go uh, uh, in a crossing pattern when I screw in. So meaning like I'll start off screwing in the top left screw then I'll screw in the bottom right screw, then I'll go up to the top again, or to the left, either way, and just kind of keep crisscrossing, zigzagging with mine. And see, now I'm going back up to the top, and I'll probably go back to the bottom left after that, and I kind of do the center ones more towards the end, like getting the outside perimeters screwed in first, and we do the center later. That's how I do it. Okay, now we are going to run the switches, LEDs, USB front ports, etc, etc, etc to the motherboard. This part is often a time where it's going to be a handy thing to have your manual. Some motherboards will have it clearly labeled on the motherboard itself, but a lot of them don't. And this is where you need to refer to the manual so you know uh, which wire goes where. Because there's a bunch of little teeny tiny wires. Um, if you are hard of vision, this might be a good time to have really good light and glasses or magnifying glass. If your eyes are okay, it shouldn't be that bad of a problem. So I'm making sure we got all the LEDs and switches, or all the LED switch wires, etc., etc., etc. See, power switch, reset switch, hard drive, and power LEDs. So here comes the manual. And 
like I said, it's important to have it. There's our disc that we don't need yet. Now we're going to find the right page. Now most of these, see there's the diagram. Now see, uh, most of these wires, it's not going to be the end of the world if we wire it wrong. If you happen to cross some of your wires, such as your power switch wires, you might get a little zap on your finger when you push the power button. Nothing that's going to actually shock you and electrocute you. Nothing that should ruin your life. And I don't think it would hurt your computer much. I could be wrong. Uh, and same with your LED wires. And I'm not going to harm things too much if you wire it wrong. They just probably won't light up. So then in that case, you need to recheck your connections, make sure you wired it correctly, make sure you're making good contact. Also, uh, one wiring piece of wiring though you do need to be careful of is USB ports. If you wire USB ports backwards, you could damage not only the front USB ports, or well, actually not probably the ports themselves, but you damage the, probably the USB on your motherboard and probably not just your front USB port but your back as well could go out um, I've seen that happen before so be careful when wiring the USB that one is important now most cases nowadays will have for your USB will have it so you can't mess it up but there's some out there where you have to wire each individual wire and those ones you gotta be careful. So again, this is another part where you gotta have a little bit of patience. Okay, this what you see here is the uh, speaker, the internal speaker for your computer. This is what goes beep when you turn the computer on to let you know if the system is okay or if it's got a problem. motherboard part is complete.